And we extend to you a very cordial invitation to come and be with us during our Gospel Truth Worship Hour. But you're also invited to be a part of our regular uh, Sunday morning worship service. Bible study starts at 9.30, and then the morning worship is at 11 o'clock. And then, of course, the Tuesday, Wednesday, midweek Bible study uh, in the uh, morning at 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the evening. And certainly you are invited to come and study with us what thus saith the Lord. We promise to give you only a Bible answer for your Bible question. We'd like to continue to express our appreciation to the leadership uh, and the entire congregation for this opportunity to be able to bring the Gospel Truth production to you that we may impart unto you what thus said the Lord. And then, of course, we'd like to continue to express our appreciation to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as observers of this program, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with those things that he knows that you need. And I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And then, of course, we would like to let you know that we do have a prayer list, a gospel truth prayer list, and we're working on making a transition so that it can be a part of uh, the gospel truth worship hour. But nevertheless, we're going to forego that list tonight, but uh, there are two names, of course, that I'd like to uh, put on it. And I'd like for you to uh, be mindful of them during uh, this particular period. Uh, the first one is the Eddie Lankford family. We're praying on behalf of Eddie Lankford III. And it's our prayer that God will bless him and uh, keep his uh, strong arm of protection around him during uh, this period of his life. And then we're also praying on behalf of the John Bradshaw family during this time of their bereavement, uh, at the time that uh, John has lost his uh, sister dead. So we're asking you to put them on your prayer list to keep them there, and we're praying that God will continue to be with them and to comfort them during this time of their bereavement. And of course, remember, the Gospel Truth also wants you to know that if you're standing in need of some social service, maybe you need a uh, food program or a rental assistance or child care or uh, services for battered women, and, and much, much more, if you call 211, that's 211. It's a referral service. There you basically tell them what you're standing in need of, and they will refer you to the source that should be able to resolve your problem. So just keep in mind, 211. And then also, we know that uh, jobs are becoming more plentiful, but there are still a number of people who are unemployed. We want to remind you that the East Bay Works One Stop Career Centers are located throughout Alameda and Contra Costa counties. And you can go to www.eastbayworks.org and there you will be able to pull up the uh, career center that is nearest to you. And in the Oakland area, it's located at 1212 Broadway, Suite 100. And when you go in, you have access to computers and uh, fax machines and telephones and resume critiquing and resume assistance. So all those things that will enhance your ability to become gainfully employed. All right, so that's about it that I have other than to let you know that you can also access the gospel truth by way of the internet on YouTube. You go to uh, youtube.com and then you bring up Eddie Cam One. Eddie is our cameraman. It's Eddie Cam One and then you go to the Gospel Truth, and there are a number of programs 
that are currently there so that you have access. And of course, the gospel of truth is worldwide, so we're encouraging you to tell your friends and neighbors about the gospel of truth. So tonight, I would like to invite your attention to uh, the book of Matthew. And here in the book of Matthew, we want to look at a subject that I think that you'll have some appreciation for because in this day and time, we, we don't have the same opportunity that those persons who uh, lived at the time during uh, the walk of Jesus that uh, could receive compliments from him. And uh, the book is Matthew, the eighth chapter, and verses five through 10. That's Matthew, the eighth chapter, verses five through 10. And the Bible says, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should have come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, and come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith no, not in Israel. So from the verses that I read for you this evening, I want to call the lesson compliments from Jesus. Compliments from Jesus. Now, Jesus was not a flattering type of person. And then the Bible lets us know that uh, flattery is really nothing. And you can go over the Psalms the uh, fifth chapter and verse number nine, and your enemies, your enemies like to flatter you, okay? But you don't want to be deceived by their flattery, all right? And then uh, they, they flatter you with their tongues. And, and then Solomon says, look, tail bears and, and those flatterers, you don't even want to associate yourself with them over in the book of Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the verse number 19. And, and the apostles, when they would go into various cities, they never used any uh, flattery or they were not trying to gain any glory or any uh, prestige among men. They went forth to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, all right? And then you can see that according to uh, 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses number five and number six. And Paul said, we didn't come to you with any uh, enticing words and trying to uh, gain favor, but we brought the gospel, all right? So now Jesus knew the minds of all men. And so he did not misplace a compliment. Uh, we find in the book of John, the second chapter, and the verses number 25, uh, he didn't waste his uh, compliments. He dealt with people as he saw them, and if they were worthy of such, then of course he would provide a compliment. The book is John, if you will, the second chapter and the verses number 25, John 2 and 25. And listen now uh, what the Bible said with regards to this matter, okay? Verse number 25, and need not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. So the Lord could discern the thoughts. He knew a man's heart. And, and so he didn't have to you know, try to make friends with somebody because of whatever it was they were doing. He could tell because he knew them. So he didn't pay any compliments. But now he did. The book is John, the first chapter, and number 47. And, and what we find here is that there was Nathaniel. And so, you see, Philip, after he had gone and got his brother and said, look, we found the Messiah, then Philip also went and found Nathaniel and said, we found him of whom the prophet said was coming. And so, 
when Jesus looked and saw, saw uh, uh, Nathaniel coming, the Bible said, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no God. Now, in other words, Jesus had observed Nathaniel under the fig tree. And he saw him working diligently and honestly and sincerely with regards to serving the Lord. Now, there were a, a good deal of corruption amongst the Jews. But here was one who was right in the sight of God, the sight of the Lord, and Jesus was impressed. Mm -hmm. All right? And he was so much impressed that he indicated that uh, uh, Nathaniel was guileless. Okay? Because of his guilelessness, he was pleased with that man. Now, what do you mean? See, generally, person with guy, they all, they all got a gift for gab and they have something they want to talk out the side of their mouth or they want to tell you this and tell you that. And if you believe them, then I have a bridge to sell you. Okay? But this man, he was not about that. He was strictly business. He was righteous. And the Lord saw that. All right? And so the Lord complimented him. I want you to understand the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Uh, the point I want you to see here, though, is that Jesus answered and said, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou that see, thou shalt see greater things than these. All right? So the compliment that Jesus paid was this man was guileless. All right? He paid a compliment to him. So if you are sincerely worshiping the Lord and you are studying like you want to, like the Lord wants you to, then you're being complimented. So this is an example of how and why the Lord compliments, okay? So that's why tonight we're talking about compliments from the Lord, all right? And then we find that uh, the uprightness, this particular uprightness of him uh, impress the Lord. And that's what we found over in John the first chapter, verses 41 through 51. So again, if you are sincerely and honestly worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, you are being complimented by Jesus. Now, in the beginning, I told you about the Roman centurion, all right? And, and we want to see the compliment that Jesus paid to him. He was a soldier, a centurion, an officer, okay? So he went to Jesus and he said, look, my servant is at home sick, all right? He has the palsy, and I wish that you would come and heal him. So Jesus said, okay, I'll come and heal him. The centurion said, well, now, Lord, wait a minute. Let me be honest with you, okay? I am a man, you know, I do all kinds of things, and I'm just really not worthy, Lord, for you to come into my house, all right? But I know what you can do. So he went on to tell Jesus, he said, now I'm, I'm a soldier and I have folk under me and I say to this soldier, you go and do this and they'll go and do that or come here and they come. And Jesus, and he said to Jesus, and I know that if you just simply speak the word, it'll be done, all right? So you know what Jesus said, I haven't seen such great faith like this, not in all of Israel, all right? So what am I telling you this morning, uh, this evening rather, that when you do things like the centurion, your faith is great. When you recognize, see somebody always wants the, the Lord to be with them. In other words, they get up off their knees and say, now Lord, where are you? Well, we always recognize that he's always on time. He's never there when you want him, but he's always on time. And some of us just think, as soon as we call him, he's got to be there. But you have to have faith knowing that he will arrive. And then knowing that, then he will compliment you because your faith is great. Yeah, we're all going to have some trials and some tribulations. There are going to be some ups and downs in our lives. But you see, we have one who said, I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. So we have to just cast our cares upon him. Because he cares for us. And know that whatever situation we're in, somebody said nothing's too hard for God to do. All right? So we want to trust him that if your faith is, is great, then you will be complimented by Jesus for your great faith. 
All right? Now, Jesus also complimented John the Baptist. The book is Matthew, the uh, 11th chapter, and the verse is number 11. And I think you all know that John was the forerunner for Jesus, all right? And John had a job before him. The Bible says, Verily I say unto you among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding that he is least in the kingdom of heaven, is greater than he. So now, John had a mission. He was on a mission to make known that Jesus was coming. He was the heralder of the prophecy, the coming of Jesus. And he went about doing that. In fact, uh, he taught what the gospel was, and as a result of that, he lost his head because he stood up for the truth. Jesus is simply saying here that because of his work, he is great. But you need to understand that those of us who are least in the kingdom of God are greater than John because John did not have the opportunity to enter into the Lord's church. But the bottom line is that John did the work. He was preaching over there in the city because there was much water over there. And, and that should give us a, an indication as to what God requires of us even today. Because there's still folk who don't want to acknowledge that, excuse me, baptism is essential to salvation. And then there are folk who just say, well, look, we'll just pour a little water over your head, or I'll dip my fingers here, and then I'll pray you like that, and, and you'll be born again. Well, we talked about that new birth not too long ago. And that's not the way that it's done. We did have new birth today. Two, two members were added to the Lord's body. They went down in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of their sins, and they rose to walk in the newness of life. And you also will be recognized and acknowledged for the work that you do, okay? And we, we all have work to do. There's something for all of us. Remember the talents, right? Yes. The Lord has issued talents to everybody. All right? And they're different. But the Lord issues those talents to you based on your ability to deal with them. In other words, God's not going to give you more than you can handle. But with what he gives you, he expects you to be productive. Otherwise, he will say you are an unprofitable servant. I don't think any of us want to hear the Lord say that you wicked, slowful, and unprofitable servant. All right? We're talking this evening just simply about the compliments that Jesus paid. He did pay. In fact, he paid five compliments, and we're talking about them now. And now, you remember the widow over there in the book of Mark? In Mark, the 12th chapter, and beginning with verse number 41 through 44, uh, Jesus was standing and he was observing the offering that was being made. And in the process, there was a little widow lady. You know, a widow is a woman who uh, her husband is deceased, okay? So the Bible says over in Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 41 through 44, and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which makes a farthing. And he called unto his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all of they which have cast in into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Now, Jesus is not saying you have to give him your last, all right? But the point is when you make a sacrifice and you give and he sees that, then he acknowledges, look, this person, I know their condition and they're giving me the best that they can. Now somebody might make $100,000 a year and might only put in, what, $50, $50, whatever, a small amount. In other words, they're not doing what they should. And then here's a poor man, poor sister, and they're just giving their best and doing just as much as this rich person or this person that has a high income. So the bottom line is you need to see and know that you are complimented 
by the Lord when you give and you work to the best of your ability. And now God is not always, now of course your money does help because it helps to promote the cause of Christ, but the Lord is expecting you to help move the congregation, help do the work, right? We have people that are off sick. Sometimes you have to call them, all right? You have to go visit with them and see what it is that you can do. So when you give your all to the Lord, then believe me, the Lord is complimenting you just as he complimented this woman, all right? And then the last illustration I want to look at is found also in the book of Mark, uh, the 14th chapter, verses 3 through 9. And here what we see is that Jesus was in Bethany, all right? And he was in the house of Simon the leper. And as he sat at meat, the Lord was sitting down having a nice meal. And this woman came in and she broke open a, a bottle of alabaster oil. This, this was a, a very expensive oil. And, and she began to anoint, anoint the Lord's head with this oil. And then there were those who were upset. They became indignant because this woman had what they considered wasted this oil. This is what the Bible says. All right, uh, beginning with verse number three. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon, the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of oil of ointment, of spikenard, spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation with them, with themselves, and said, why was this ointment made? Or oh, why was this waste of the ointment made? And it says, for well, it might have been sold for some money, at least 300 pence. You see, some are only concerned about the material things, but here was a woman recognizing who Jesus was, and she did a great thing for him. She anointed his head with oil. And, and then, of course, there were those, I won't call them elders or deacons, but anyway, there were those who were upset because this woman had done this for the Lord, all right? So the point here is that when you do things for the Lord, for his service and this sacrifice that you make for him, remember, he says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And this is not hard, he said, which is your reasonable service. So when you give reasonably to the Lord, when you do uh, good things for him, then of course you, of course, are going to be complimented, all right? And then this is what Jesus said. He said, for you're going to have the poor, which you always, and that was the point that they were making, that, look, we could have had some money to sell, to give to the poor. But he knew that their minds, the Lord knew the minds of everybody, all right? But the bottom line was this, they were making that excuse and then Jesus made it clear, look, you're going to have the poor with you always. So but me, you're not going to always have with you. So you go ahead and, and let this lady uh, do what she has done. She's done a good thing to me. Listen to what he said. He says, she has done what she could. All right? She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say, and verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout, uh-huh. Uh, the whole, let me get that right. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, that this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. So Jesus complimented this woman. She did what she could for him. All right? So when you do what you can for the Lord, he acknowledges it. He, you don't hear him saying, you know what, that was a good job. I appreciate that. But he's given us an example of when he will give a compliment. And he does compliment us. Like I said, we don't live in a time when we can walk and talk with Jesus as they did in the past. And people, Mary and Martha and, and Lazarus and, and those people who were, had real good friendships with the Lord. Well, the point is, it's written. He's already given us the opportunity to know that he appreciates us when we do good things in his sight. 
And one of the best things that he has done for us and we should recognize is that he made the sacrificial uh, offering of his life that you and I might have a right to eternal life. Mm -hmm. And you can come and some, receive some compliments from the Lord by coming into his vineyard. He says, come into my vineyard and work. Uh -huh. He didn't say come in and sit down. He said, come in and work. And whatsoever is right, I will pay. Okay? And you heard me not too long ago. I said, payday is coming, and Jesus is paying. So I hope that you are working hard for the master. If you're not, then it's not too late to get busy. All right? Time is winding up. We are in the last days. So if you haven't uh, made your calling and election sure, it's high time that you wake up out of the sleep that you're in and recognize that it's later than you think. All right? So if you are out there, I know sometimes you're young, but I tell you, if you are 12 years old, remember Jesus? at 12 was about his father's business, okay? So if you're 12 years old, 13, 14, 15, the Lord is willing to accept you to come into his vineyard and also work, all right? And then I know some of you up there, you real grown, you're 21, 22, and you know, you're out having a good time and doing all those things, you're not really even thinking about the Lord. Mm -hmm. You too should know that, uh-huh, death is certain, all right? It doesn't have any respect to persons, young people, old people. 30 years old, 35, 40. Oh, and you've been blessed, you're 50? Oh, count those blessings. You need to recognize whether or not you have given the Lord any of your service. Say, what, he bless you to be 60? Oh, you really need to count your blessings, all right? And you should know that the sun is about to go down. You need to make sure that you've done things right in God's sight so that when you come before him in judgment, you will hear him say, well done. Well, how am I going to hear that? Well, first of all, you need to hear his word, all right? The Bible tells us that uh, the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. You must believe his word. Repent of your sins and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and then finally be buried in the liquid grave of baptism. By doing those five things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, then you will be saved in the end. I'm encouraging you to join us again next week. And better yet, come on out and be a part of the Gospel True Worship Hour. So until next week, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.